You can go on to the first slide, Larry. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, so when I talk to students about writing their essays, I'm always encouraging them to think about this as a conversation. This is not just an English essay that's supposed to make you sound smart. Your transcript, a student's transcript is already going to show that they are a good student. So the essay is really meant to show personality and creativity and, and not really sound stilted with five paragraphs and a thesis sentence. So we encourage students to really harness their creativity and brainstorm a topic that showcases who they are as a person, not just who they are as a resume. Uh, so we, we really tell students to think of this as part of their summer time investment. This is really something they should be doing over the summer. And if you work with us, you know, Larry and I really harp on this with our students of you're doing this work over the summer, whether you like it or not. Uh, the main reason is because if you're trying to write college essays during the fall, when you have your senior coursework, hopefully a senior social life, if we're all allowed out of the house at some point, um, it's hard to be creative and have a little fun with these essays and have all this work piled on top of you. Um, so we remind students that essays take time, at least an, an hour to, es to outline an essay and then an hour and a half to draft that first draft. The first draft is the hardest, and usually these essays, the long personal statement is 500 words to 650 words. So you're thinking about a page to a page and a half, which sounds like a lot, but if you're trying to tell the story of yourself or a story of your life, it may not be enough. So you have to think creatively and concisely, and you need to work on how to harness your ideas and put them in an essay that really holds the reader's attention. It does get easier as you draft these essays and it gets quicker as you move through them, um, but it does take a while. So please don't let your student or a student, please don't think yourselves that you're just gonna write something in 30 minutes and stick it in a college application. We don't recommend that. Most students really invest a lot of time because this is your chance to stand out and we really want you to use all of your, all of your brain and all of yourself to show off just how cool you are. Um, the other misconception that students have is that they're going to write one essay on their college application and they're going to be done. That is unfortunately a big misconception. Most colleges have the main kind of personal statement essay, the 500 to 650 word essay, and then they usually have some other kind of smaller essays that we call supplemental essays. Two is normal, so most other colleges will have two more essays, so the personal statement plus two more essays, so three essays in all. Some schools can have as many as seven essays. Uh, Wake Forest has nine essays, so we always say you really have to like Wake Forest in order to apply there. Um, some of the Ivy League schools have as many as nine, 11 essays. Um, you really have to invest yourself in this process and think creatively because you want your essays to stand out from everybody else. Um, many of our students will write as many as 30 essays. Okay, we can keep going, Larry. So these are the common application personal essay questions. If you're wondering what the common application is, this is common to over 400 schools. Many schools accept the common application now, and you can see it at commonapp.org. And these essay questions are the questions for the rising seniors. So if you just finished your junior year, this, these are the questions that you will have a choice to answer. You only have to pick one. So don't panic if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to write all these essays. These are essays one through four. On the next slide, I'll, I'll show you the last three. Um, some of these questions are more general than not. The first one is, you know, tell us what your story is. You know, so if you have a learning difference that you'd like to talk about in an essay. You could do that here. That's not a bad thing. Or if you have, you know, something that's happened in your family that you'd like to talk about, you could do that here. Um, the second question about recounting a time that you faced a challenge or a setback or a failure. This one's hard for me as an essay coach in general, just because it's asking a student to tell a college a time that you struggled with something and then flip it around and then convince that same college to admit you. Some students choose this topic. 21% of all applicants chose this topic last year. So clearly students like it. It does show character. So if that's something you want to write about, you can. Um, but I would encourage you to try to make the setback part of the, app, of the essay 
concise and then what you learned from it, the main thrust of the essay. Uh, the third question about challenging a belief or an idea. This can come across as a philosophical essay. Um, it doesn't have to be. I think it can be something as silly as your parents always hated bananas and then you tried them and you loved them and then you ate them on everything. Like it could be fun. It doesn't have to be about church or about, you know, something philosophical. It could be, it could be a fun essay. So feel free to to kind of press the boundaries of that essay. I think it has potential to be a creative essay. Uh, the fourth one could could be fun. Most students look at this and kind of wrinkle their nose like, ugh, I don't want to do this. It's the describe a problem you've solved or a problem you'd like to solve. I think this is cool. I mean, it could be intellectually, it could be research, it could be ethically. Um, or it could even be something involved with your personal life. I mean, it could be that your grandmother has dementia or that, you know, your family is struggling with um, a special needs family member or, you know, your dad lost his job during COVID and personal finance is a challenge. Um, any of these things could be an essay topic. It really just matters why it matters to you. Uh, so don't see this as, again, a chance to, to show off what an intellectual you are, but just a chance to tell your story. So these are options one through four. Larry, let's show options five through seven. Um, so option five is another popular choice of discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth. I think this is a fine essay topic. I would just be careful with being too self-aggrandizing. Um, and that's just a fancy word for tooting your own horn. Um, just be careful that you, you still come off as relatively humble. Like we want you to toot your own horn, but we don't want you to toot it so much that it really sounds like you're just, you think that you're so awesome that everybody, every college should take you. Um, so if you're going to talk about personal growth, talk about it in a way that shows that you're humble and that you don't know everything about everything. That, that's my advice on that one. Um, I really like number six. I think it's because I'm a nerd um, and I've always liked number six ever since they added it. Um, describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Um, this could be this can be silly. I mean, this could be a word that you love that you just think is fun. This could be children's literature. This could be matching Tupperware with tops. I mean, it could be something as silly and creative as that, or it could be, you know, the Odyssey or you know something more intellectual like that. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it matters to you. And you'll hear me say that over and over again, and you'll probably get sick of it. Um, the last option is that you can write any essay you want. So if none of these topics really appeal to you, you can write anything you want and stick it in the essay blank. And 25% of the applicant pool did this last year. So that's totally fine. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so when many students come to me and I say, what are you gonna write about? They look at me like I have five heads. They think like, what, why would I know? <laughs> Where do I start? And so I say, okay, are you gonna do a big topic or a small topic? And they continue to stare at me like, why, why are you asking me questions that I don't know the answer to? And to me, a, a big topic is a more general topic. So think about like, leadership or character or integrity. Um, so with leadership, we had a student several years ago who wrote about her love of being a member of the yearbook staff. And at her school, uh, there were two cafeterias and the two cafeterias were almost segregated by economic, socioeconomic class. And so being a part of the yearbook staff, she took it upon herself to interview people in both of the cafeterias and almost um, do a biography of both of the cafeterias. And she wrote her essay about this and how being a part of the yearbook staff really led to her interest in being a journalist. This shows leadership, you know, this shows her seeing something happening at her school and taking action to do something about it. That's leadership, but she didn't say, I like your book, I'm a leader, you should admit me to your college. She took a big topic like leadership and she provided an example of 
we have these two cafeterias and people don't seem to get along. And so I did something about it. That's what really makes it personal. That works. Okay. If that seems like something that's not going to work for you, you can always do a small topic, which I love a small topic because then you can give it lots of detail, which I think is really fun. Um, I think about an essay that a student wrote many years ago about science, and he compared loving science as much as he loved Disney World. And so he retold the story of the first time that he went to Disney World and just how enthusiastic and childlike he felt. And then kind of likens that to the first time he went into a science class and how he felt that same degree of enthusiasm and kind of childlike passion for science, just like he did for Disney World. Cool, same thing, like this matters to this dude, this is what a college wants to know. And also a college is gonna see you as someone who's gonna to come to their campus and make a difference. So the girl who is on the yearbook staff is clearly gonna be someone who's going to be a leader amongst her peers. The guy who loves science is going to be somebody who takes science classes, who helps clean up the lab, who does research over the summer, both of whom are welcome on almost any college campus. If neither of those sounds good to you and you're still thinking, okay, why am I in this webinar? This is not helping. <laughs> there are dramatic essays you can write. And this doesn't apply to everyone, but some people have stories of things that have happened to them that they want to tell a college. And I always encourage students to tell their story if, it, if, it, if they want to. So if there are stories of abuse in your home, if there are stories of financial distress in your home, um, if you've lived with your extended family and that's been good and bad, talk about it. Um, if you've had addiction in your home, talk about it. Um, we learn a lot from the home in which we live in. And I think the more that a student is willing to share that with an admissions office, the more they are able to see your character and your maturity. Um, so if that's something you're willing to share, I think that's a great idea. Most students are very nervous about coming across like a sob story. Um, and I get it. I, nobody wants to be a sob story. So don't. Don't be a sob story. Tell your story. But then instead of just leaving it at that, talk about what you've learned. Um, there was a very powerful essay I read many years ago about a student who experienced domestic violence. And instead of just telling his story, he talked about what he learned from being a domestic or from being a witness to domestic violence and what kind of man he wanted to be instead of what kind of men he had witnessed in his life. That made a big impact on me. That's probably been almost 15 years ago. Um, so don't just leave it at this is what happened to me, or this is what I've been experiencing, but draw it back to this is what I've learned and this is why I'm different. If that still doesn't apply to you, you, oh, go back. I'm not done yet, Larry. <laughs> One more thing, um, insightful essays. If none of these essays that I've referred to apply to you, I think there's still room for the insightful specific to you essay. Uh, this is just an essay that only you could write. Uh, we always give the example of if we took 10 essays and spread them on the floor, your best friend should be able to come in and pick up yours and say, oh, this is my friend Margaret's because, you know, my best friend would know my story. I think about there was a child that we worked with many years ago who moved around a lot. And she wrote her essay kind of in each paragraph about looking out the back of her car window and watching each of her homes disappear into the night. And this wasn't super dramatic, so you moved around a lot, but she learned a lot about herself by moving around a lot. This was insightful and she did it in a creative way. That works too. Okay, now we can go on, Larry. Okay, so once you've written the personal statement, whew, that's done then you have to write supplemental essays. So the supplemental essays are those small essays that are just for each school. So we've shown you some examples here from UNC Chapel Hill, from the University of Chicago, Barnard, University of Virginia, and Wake Forest. Uh, these are specific only to these schools and they're typically shorter. So think like 200 to 400 words-ish. Um, some can be shorter, but that's a good average. Um, the other one that we haven't shown you that's very popular with colleges is why do you want to go to our school? 
Um, we think of these essays as your chance to convince the college that you are a person who's going to show up and contribute. So you want these colleges to believe that you love their school and that you can be someone that can show up and, you know, go to the student center and get involved or make your roommate laugh or set up, you know, the two guys down the hall for a date or, you know, whatever it is. We want you to understand that these essays are a chance for you to show your personality. So know that you should be using these to, to be funny or fun or, or just to be yourself. This is really a chance to be creative. And keep going. There we go. Oh, no, wrong way. There we go. Um, a hook. Uh, many students will ask me, you know, do I need some sort of special first sentence to, to bring the audience in? Is there something I need to say, you know, to really, you know, it's a dark and stormy night to really draw the reader in? You don't have to. Um, I think it's a good idea if you can come up with a good hook, but it needs to be something that is intriguing. Um, how do you come up with a hook? Uh, to me, it all comes down to details. And usually when I'm teaching these seminars, I will pick students out of the audience and make them talk to me. Um, it's harder to do this on a webinar, but I will tell you a story of one of the first times I was teaching this uh, class. I uh, was, I asked the student, it was in the back of the room, I remember, I said, you know, what do you like to do in your spare time? Thinking, okay, I'm going to come up with a hook about one of her extracurriculars. This is going to be easy. I got this. Um, and she looks at me and she kind of smiles, this half smile, and she says, oh, I do fire baton twirling. And I thought, oh, goodness, this is going to be harder than I thought. But we were able to talk about how the flames on her fire batons are blue at the bottom and how the blue of her fire batons actually really inspire her because that's the hottest part of the flame. And so that is what she started her essay with. So when you think about what you're going to say in your essay, you need to think about, you know, what the main details are with your essay. I was talking to a student yesterday and he said, you know, I really just like to create things. I'm just a creator. And I said, okay, what do you like to create? And he said, well, why do you ask me? Well, because that's how we're going to come up with a hook. Like you need to give me examples. Examples are where your hook comes from. So if you're looking for a hook, that's where you need to start. Okay, we keep going. Just some best practices. Um, try not to use the thesaurus if you can. You don't need it. Um, as I said before, your transcript has already shown that you're smart and that you have worked really hard in school. So don't go through and thesaurus every other word. It doesn't help you. Um, there's a, a joke kind of in the admissions world. We call those kids Tyrannosaurus Rex because you are overusing big words. That's, that's not a good thing. Um, you want to show, not tell. And your English teacher has said this, I'm sure, until he or she is blue in the face. But you want to draw the reader in by making them feel like they are a part of your world. So by doing that, you can use the five senses, you know, sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch, you know, the five senses, hopefully. Um, but if you're showing and not telling, you're giving that reader something fun to read. They're reading countless essays every day. So if you're showing them and bringing them into your world and making them feel something, they're gonna wanna read your essay. They're gonna wanna get to know you, which is what you want. Active voice. I think this is the grammar nerd coming out in me, but you really want to be using active instead of passive voice. Um, typically this is taught in ninth grade English. Um, so if you don't remember, go back and learn. Um, but passive voice is really hard to read when you're reading a lot of college essays. So please go back and reteach yourself if you don't know what active voice is. Um, and as I said before, conversational uh, essays are really welcome in this process. These are meant to be uh, a, an opportunity for you to converse with the person who's gonna make a decision about your file. So feel free to use pronouns and contractions and hyphens all of that is okay and personal pronouns are okay. So I and me and we and you and all that is, is fine. I know your English teacher would get nervous about that, but this is not an English paper. So 
feel free to, to use those sorts of things and make the reader feel like you're talking to just them because they are the person that's ultimately going to decide your fate. Okay. I think that's it. Um, okay. One thing I did want to mention um, before we finish is that the common application is going to offer another kind of extra essay this year um, on COVID-19. Um, and the essay is going to ask you uh, what, if anything, uh, you've experienced during the COVID-19 kind of um, quarantine and crisis. We encourage students to answer this if you have something to say, especially if you have been doing something that's been really interesting. Like if you've learned to play an instrument or if you've taken a really cool class online that you've learned a lot about, I think you should address that. Uh, we really encourage students to tell colleges what you've learned and what you've been doing with your time. I have one student who's learned to make homemade pasta and he's been making homemade pasta every single day. I think that's great. You know, so please feel free to use this space to, to tell colleges what you've been doing besides going to school online and taking naps and probably playing some video games. Um, even if that just means you're reading your way through, you know, a couple of reading lists that really mean a lot to you. I think that's a great idea. So please use that extra space to answer the COVID-19 question if you can. Larry, do you have anything else to add? So I would add a couple key points and that is that this year, college essays are going to be more important than they have been in past years because a lot of schools have gone test optional. A lot of students have passed fail for second semester junior year. Um, so the essay is going to be that critical point of where the colleges are going to learn about the student. Historically, the essay has sort of been the keystone of an arch of it's what supports the whole application, it's what puts meat on the, on the bones of an application. They have your transcript, so they want to understand more about you. The other thing is the Common App personal statement becomes the foundation that all the supplemental essays sit on. So it's important that you build a solid foundation. Um, and those supplemental essays uh, specific is terrific. So saying I want to go to a small liberal arts institution in New England really is not going to impress Colby, Bates, and Bowden because there's probably 50 schools within a stone's throw that all meet that. So you need to be able to talk about what is specific about that institution um, in that supplemental essay. So those would be some key points I would add. Um, we have some good questions. Um, one of the first questions is, can I use a topic that one of my older siblings used, um, even though it still relates to me because it's something about the family? Do you want me to take that, Larry? Sure. I'm, I'm open to it. Um, I think I would have a conversation with your sibling about it. I could just because I, it was their work first. Um, and then I think I'd have a conversation with your family about it, um, just because it sounds like it's a family issue. And I, I think you'd want to put your own spin on it of how it's affected you, um, because that's a totally different topic than how it affected your sibling. But yeah, I think it's fine. I would just, I would have some conversations before you jumped right into it. And then there's also a question of how do they access this recording later, and we'll put it on our website under the blog uh, next week. Yep. After I edit out the parts that Margaret and I were just chatting beforehand. Uh, so those are some of the key questions we've got. Uh, another one is some schools have specific um, essay questions such as the University of California, the University of Texas, MIT, how do those things differ from the common app essay question? So they don't have their own app. They don't subscribe to the common app. Is that what you're talking about? You're right. So the University of California does not subscribe to the common app. Neither does the University of Texas or MIT. Um, so they have their own essays without the personal statement. Um, it's my opinion that you can typically write your personal statement first 
and then use that personal statement and fit it into one of the questions on the UT or UC or MIT application essay. So another question here is when does the Common App open up? And the answer is you can create a Common App account today. Today. You can fill out what I call the data section of the Common App right now, which is your name, your address, your phone number, your parents' name, address, phone number, um, your activities, all of that will roll over to um, August 1st when you can start submitting applications. Uh, if you put the essay in before August 1st, it does not necessarily roll over. Um, supplemental essays, those questions tend to come out um, late July, very beginning of August. Uh, we'll see what happens this year. I'm hoping that uh, most colleges say we're just using last year's questions and let's make them live. <laughs> but uh, having done this for 20 years, I have little expectation that that will happen. But the Common App is open and you can make an account now. So I would recommend you start. Uh, the hard question is, where did your parents go to college and when did they graduate in that list of questions? So I think we've answered all the questions we have. We thank you all for attending. Um, next week, we're looking forward to having some college students be our guest and talk about their experiences on college campuses and what they would have said to their high school self uh, now that they've been to college. Uh, and uh, last week, we talked about um, what to do this summer. And I'm happy to say that we now have a virtual internship opportunity for our uh, existing clients to help them find something to do. Um, that's really it. Thank you all for attending. Appreciate it. Bye.